welcome to another episode of Amsterdam Comic Geek. Today I want to talk to you about Tony Stark, the billionaire inventor, also known as Iron Man. The first time I met Iron Man was in one of the Avengers comics I read when I was a kid. But the first time this superhero really made an impression on me was when I read Iron Man Annual No. 10, written by David Michelini, with art by Paul Smith, ink by Michael Gustovich. The annual was part of the Atlantis Attacks event. Atlantis Attacks was a crossover storyline which ran through most of the summer annuals published by Marvel Comics in 1989. At the time, I read mostly Dutch translations of Marvel Comics, so the annuals that were part of the Atlantis Attack story were published in a series called Marvel Superheroes by Dutch publisher Junior Press. It came out in the early months of 1990. In this video I'm not going into too much details of Atlantis Attacks, because what I want to talk about is the first time I met Iron Man and what kind of impact that meeting had on me. The first time we see old Shellhead is when he's diving underwater. Iron Man is diving on the bottom of the ocean and swimming towards us. I immediately fell for Paul Smith's drawing style. Previously I had seen his work in X-Men comics and liked those a lot as well. Smith is a master cartoonist and has a great knack for designing panels. He draws only the elements that are necessary for the reader to comprehend the story and leaves a lot of stuff out. Yet, the elements that are important, such as Iron Man's armor, are vibrant with details. Prince Namor, the Submariner and Hydra also play an important part in this story. It's the first time I came across Hydra. Nowadays, you can't escape these guys since they are overused in series like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and pop up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as well. But back then, I was happily surprised to meet these bad guys. Reading this story, I got to know Tony Stark a little bit. Back then, he was paralyzed from the waist down. And when Tony wasn't in his armor, he was confined to a wheelchair, or in his case, a hoover chair. Apparently, he got shot by a jealous woman, and that's how he got paralyzed. Because the armor gives Tony freedom of movement, he chooses to stay inside it more and more. Later I learned Stark has an addictive personality. Ever since that first encounter with Iron Man, I've read many of his adventures, including the Demon in the Bottle storyline that deals with his alcoholism. A panel like this really made me excited for the character. The way Iron Man smashes through that thick wall with little effort shows how powerful his armor is. That power is also demonstrated in the panels that follow. Hydra shoots at Iron Man with everything they've got, but they don't even scratch the guy. There are a couple of things I found interesting about Tony Stark. Like most good Marvel characters, he has his flaws. He's arrogant, he's an alcoholic and a womanizer. Now, that last characteristic I don't consider to be a bad one necessarily, but that's just my personal opinion. Although he is a billionaire and a very intelligent inventor, Stark still is a very relatable character. Unlike other superheroes, the power of Iron Man lies within his armor. Stark is still a smart cookie without it, but a case can be made that without his armor he is not Iron Man. Although that doesn't necessarily mean he is not heroic, because Stark's heroism comes from his heart. The hero Iron Man is a combination of technology, the armor, and the man inside the armor, the intelligent inventor with a quirky personality named Tony Stark. That's why I'm not very fond of Iron Man stories in which other people use the armor to play the hero. To me, Iron Man comics are about Tony Stark, not James Rhodes or Riri Williams. Besides all these points about why I like Iron Man because of his personality, I love the look of his armor. Of course the design changed over time because Iron Man keeps up with the times and modern technology. That's also a fun thing about reading old Iron Man comics, I think. You get to know what was the popular thing back in the day. For instance, Stan Lee writes about Iron Man's armor being full of transistors, which at the time, back in the 1960s, were a big thing. Later on, Stark started using nanotechnology. So, in a way, the Iron Man books reflect technological development pretty closely. But I digress. The point I want to make is what the armor looked like in that first encounter I found particularly beautiful. It is a great design. 
Ever since Iron Man Annual Number 10, I've been a fan of Iron Man. He's one of Marvel's greatest characters. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the videos I make, please consider subscribing and liking the videos and sharing them on social media if you feel so inclined. I'm also curious to know whether or not you like Iron Man and if you do, what do you like most about Tony Stark? Thanks again and I'll see you guys the next episode. Cheers.